Welcome to our online global self-awakening retreat. This is day eight. We've been on this amazing journey together for eight days. It's been an incredible time. I've been very much enjoying every moment of it. Very beautiful, powerful, divine energy. We've been blessed by the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, appearing here and shining her light and the wisdom. The universal wisdom has been revealing itself to all of us. The grace. And the more you recognize the presence the grace in our lives. Consequently, the more you become humble and grateful to this transition of recognition of the presence of the Almighty Spirit, the big kahuna, the boss. that without the the grace the presence and the love the light the wisdom that we receive from her majesty we will indeed be lost in this ocean of eternity We can see it with, with those surrounding us, which is a big population of the planet, how lost they are. Because simply they don't have grace in their lives, or they don't, well, the grace is here, they just don't recognize it. They're not really touched by it. They don't sense it in their hearts. So, the focus is the world. As I've said, they're chasing their shadow, having their back towards the sun, and running after their shadow, chasing the world. The world of accumulating more stuff. The world of objects. Trying to look for happiness in the world outside and trying to catch these things, which sometimes you catch them and you get them, but the satisfaction is very temporarily and quite, I mean, basically it turns to disappointment. Because finally you get the object of your desire, but then it doesn't keep you satisfied. You want something else. You want more. So we keep running for it and trying to get it. Why we live a life full of fear? Because the fear comes that we may lose what we have acquired. Now we're worried about losing it. First, we're concerned about getting it and then we're worried about losing it. So it just keeps going. There's no end to it till we turn 
inwards and walk towards the sun. That spirit, consciousness, awareness, God, love, that becomes our priority, our focal, the focal point, the focus becomes that. And we turn around and going in that direction, inwardly. And rejecting everything else. So in a way, you sacrifice everything else for your true purpose in this life. The unification with the Divine Self becomes your true purpose and it becomes the number one priority. Everything else can wait. Everything else should serve this purpose. Because nothing else is worthy in comparison to this prize. Because this is the only one that is going to free us from the bondage of the cycle of suffering and birth and death and rebirth. The same story keeps going on and on and on. And it's been going on ever since the ever since. Until the Master arrives, the Guru comes, the Grace comes, and forces you to go to look inwards. And then the question comes, who am I? Who am I? It's a very valid question. Everybody should ask themselves that question. <clears throat> Who am I? Who are you? How do you define yourself? How do you explain yourself? What is your true identity? Is it your name? Your first name? Is it your last name? I am John Smith. Is that who I am? Can't I change my name to Joseph Blake? I don't know, some other name? When somebody asks you, who are you? How do you explain yourself to them? Well, my name is John, John Smith. I'm from the U.S. or I'm from Sweden or I'm from Iran or whatever. And I'm an engineer. I'm a life coach. I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a dad. I'm Christian. I'm Buddhist. I'm atheist. I'm whatever. How do you explain yourself? How do you describe yourself? How do you introduce yourself? Who are you? Have you asked yourself this question? Who am I? And that's a major, major question for a spiritual seeker. If you're a lover of the truth and you're dedicated, then you must at one point ask yourself that question. This is absolutely a necessity. Asking yourself, who am I? Really, and just take a look. Who am I? And what am I doing here? Why am I here? That's the second question. Who am I and what am I doing here? Who are you? Tell me. I want to know who you are. Anybody? Somebody wants to tell me who you are? I'm here available. I'm all ears. I want to hear. 
Hi, Candace. Hi. I think I'm space. I'm the space inside. Okay, so you think or you are? I, 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 I am. <laughs> <laughs> Because when you say, I think I am space, then there is doubts in there. So, you are space. Great. And do you feel that all the time or are you just feeling it right now? I feel it quite a bit of the time, but not all of the time. Okay. Well, that's a good, honest answer and what are you doing here why are you here i'm here connecting with you and the other the others on the zoom okay now why are you here on this life why were you born why oh, are you on <laughs> <laughs> why are you here on this planet I cancel that I am here to to connect with God to learn that that's who I am. Okay, so you feel like that's your mission on this planet. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for not being afraid and coming out. You're welcome. Anybody else? Anyone else? Feels like Hi, hi, Amy. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to. Just one second. I'm trying to get you unmuted. Are Good you... morning. Good morning. Um, so the answer to the question, um, I am an infinite being living a human experience, and I feel like my purpose is to be love and light and to, to also give it and help raise everyone's or raise myself and others frequencies or vibration. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that every day? Um, yeah, every moment. Every moment. Maybe even with the down moments is like, I ask myself, what can I do to to uh, raise my frequency. Right. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming out and showing up. I appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Anybody else? I would say I am higher consciousness living in a third in dimension in this reality. Well, we're in a dual reality, but um, the, the tangible one out there is the, the physical and the, um, the consciousness one, the higher dimension, uh, the higher dimensions are the non-physical. So it's a uh, a dance between both of bringing the higher to, if we want to say the lower vibrations. And um, I particularly liked your, <coughs> excuse me, I particularly liked your um, example yesterday of facing the sun and having the shadow behind. Um, and the awareness of that. So I do try to keep that awareness. No, I'm not in it all the time or I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am certainly aware of it and have worked on it, I would say, uh, all of my life, depending on my um, degree of consciousness at the moment or my age group uh, of the time or my whatever. But I was always aware of it, I think, from birth uh, from whenever I could figure it out. But um, I was going to say, yeah, that, that was helpful because I, it, it seems, the, for me, it's an easier if you face the light uh, in your example, or the sun, I think that's what, what, what you said. You face the sun um, and 
the, the shadows, I would say, are the reality of the third dimensional living and the body was brought into this life and perhaps the past lives and the karma and whatever else is going on mm -hmm. uh, that we deal with, not only with ourselves, but of course with everyone else that we encounter along the way. And it helps me in encountering others in just being quiet and to try to be the observer. I, that, that word helps me a lot. I mean, it's the same as awareness, but to in interacting with others, especially those who are not on the same wavelength, and there are very okay. many um, in family and all the rest of it, not to get involved in long confrontations or even in any, you know, let, let each person be unless I am asked or unless I can share something easily, but not, I don't feel I've got a evangelistic mission to go out to convert people or remotely or anything like that. I think just stand in the light, I think Amy said, uh, light and love, I think that's pretty good. I think if we can, uh, I, I try to aim there, around there, and, and to be being. And in the being, then hopefully the doing flows. In my better moments, <laughs> the right. doing flows. Right, easily, right. Because, you know, we have the downhills and the right. uphills and everything else. Along the okay. Way. Well, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Try ask this question for a moment, and as you're asking this question, bring your attention up here to your third eye. You may look in here, or you may look deep inside yourself as you're asking that question. And see what happens in that moment. Just be attentive to it. And simply just be available and see what happens when you ask that question. Who am I? See what happens. Now just gently come back. Anybody wants to share with me what came for you when you asked that question and you were just quiet? Yeah, go ahead, Katie. Oneness, with God and That came for you? Oneness with divine and God? So was it like in a, it was like a feeling or you were just gone into it? What happened? You, you, have, you have to talk a little bit louder because... It just came. It just came. Right, the sense of oneness. Right. Exactly. Right. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. So we say we're one. Is that right? Do we say we're one? Are we one? Are we one? It's all one. Is it all one? Or there is two? And somebody wants to... I, I want to know where if we're all agreed that it's all one. I don't know. I'm asking. Is it all one? Ola? I'm unmuting you, Ola. Anyone else? I, obviously, you... Okay, Sushmita. All right, you can unmute yourself. Okay. So tell me. 
What? Yeah, hi. Is it all one? Yeah, so I'm... Um, yeah? It's all yes. one. Is there an exception yeah. in there or yeah. it's all one? No, it's all one. It's all one. Okay. No there is no exceptions. Good. Hang on to that one. I like that. Hi, Jesse. I'm good, Jesse. You have to talk louder, honey. I can't hear you. Barely, but go ahead. Get a little closer to the microphone. Can you hear me now? I can hear you very well now. Okay, perfect. So the answer that came for me was um, just that I am, I did not have the answer of I am one, but more just the answer of I am the observer. So the way I saw it in my mind was the flashlight and I was projecting that light on whatever I wanted to focus on. Okay. So maybe I'm, I'm not sure if I'm just too much in my mind about that question, but. Yeah, it just, that's what came up for you in a moment, right? Yes. Great. Yeah, it's, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting certain answer. It's not a, you know, it's not like right or wrong, but I'm just curious about what comes for everybody so so i appreciate it Th thank you for showing up thank you yeah anyone else here hi leslie hi hi Sarantustra. hi leslie um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to be doing the, um, the, the life coaching, the private life coaching. Yeah, I'm excited for us to start too. It's I gonna... already feel the empowerment of it. Like, it's just like I already feel it's like more juice in order to be able to stay in place of remembering, of being in the presence. Yeah, life training program is my signature. Um, program it's the best work i've ever created so far and um i just love it because i i mean when i do the work i love it because i can see the transformation in in the people that i work with but having this opportunity of really spending time one-on-one -on -one, with someone who's really committed and they're really serious about it and and they show up it's it's really amazing for me to see it because yeah i get compensated for my time that's one aspect of it of course but the joy i get from seeing transformation taking place in another human being of merging into the oneness that joy i get is beyond any kind of monetary compensation it's that's what really powers me to go forward or when we do an event like this or when i'm having a retreat in sedona or in sweden or any kind of workshop i do any kind of interaction or the academy as basic as doing the academy and when I observe how someone is changing for better and their life, they're becoming quiet, the nervousness, the intensity, the anxiety is disappearing and they're just becoming very centered. I can see their face is getting younger and it's like 10, 20 years of stress or nervousness or anxiety is being removed and they're transforming into this light being, that's where I feel compensated more than anything else. So I'm very excited we're gonna start this work together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so okay. As soon as, my, as soon as I make my first payment, I feel like I need to pay you first before we um, 
at least initiate that right. as, a, a, right. as part of the exchange also right. feels like the right thing. Right. Um, so I want to just thank you for the Academy on a weekly basis because it got me, it got me to come back because I was having a hard time. I've, I've been in the place of remembrance and have been really encompassed by it, by, by the uh, sincerity of my intention to be in it and then the grace that would come in response to that. But somehow with everything going on in the country and I have been in, in, swept up in it, um, that it's been hard for me to extract myself from it. And so I've begun to, the Academy on that weekly basis has given me a, a place to begin to come, to keep coming back, to keep coming back. So now I'm looking forward to doing it even more deeply because I feel that the most profound service that I can provide in this time is just to do this work. It's just yeah. to be quiet, it's to stop participating in the polarization of what's going on or my own reactions or judgments or all of that because I, I have knowledge about who I am as being, I'll, I'll just say what was there for me in the moment when you said to ask the question and when I went there was just the experience that I was perceiving it. I, I can't say that I was it, I, I just felt the presence and I felt the love and I felt the beauty, the stillness, it was just like, and and but there was a love affair in there, so there's still some there's still some differentiation, and I think I, I almost feel like that's part of why I'm even in a human body is to enjoy that, um, of that I am that I am, remembering that I am. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so no, I'm not always there, <laughs> and I really want to be there all the time. I feel like it's the only way to live. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be outside of it, really, and swept yes. up into some other part of yeah. my brain. So, well, that's that's a, a amazing spiritual maturity and coming to this level, the recognition of the urgency, recognizing that it's urgent, sensing the urgency that this is the time right now. Like yeah, yeah, exactly, because this is like thousands of years, but even if we don't talk about that in this life, life of procrastinating and just postponing things, of recognizing, coming to this maturity of re recognition of the moment, of realizing that you found the path, you found the teacher, you found the teachings, and you're tuned in. And it's like, you've seen these Doberman dogs, Dobermans? Have you ever watched Doberman, Doberman dogs? That if yeah. something goes, their ears goes up like this, and they're like really like going like that, you know, and those certain type of, and it's like all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. It's like you get, focused on that this is it this is it between horses horses are yeah like, like, like right they just get yeah. sharp and uh that is it's like a stew you're cooking the master is the ma when i say the master i'm not referring to the person and i'm not referring to the body I'm talking about the master, the master of all, when I'm referring to it. And it's like the master is having a pot and making a stew. And in this stew, maybe they put the lamb in there and they start cooking the lamb. And it's slowly, if anyone's been co cooking food and cooking you 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 know that most food you cook them slowly and you cook them a long time but it's got the timing and then you add the different ingredients to this like okay you're cooking 
there is lamb in it and you put some onions in there and some garlic and you fried it first and then you're slowly cooking it and then in this cooking then you're adding the herbs and you're adding the herbs because you want to absorb the herbs in the juice the potatoes and the carrots and the other vegetables but then you're not going to put those things ahead of time as you put the meat in there you're not adding those things because they will be smashed and they will be overcooked so stage by stage you're adding things to it and that's the master is preparing us it's like cooking us slowly slowly through different stages so it comes to the final stage that is ready to be served and in this cooking sometimes you may experience like they put you on a grill and they turn up the heat and they're really burning you and that's because they want the fat to melt and that's when we're going through major stuff in our lives and we got all this shaking going on because we lost someone we love or somebody broke up with us or I went through a major crash and I lost everything whatever and I'm cooking cooking inside we all have gone through that it's impossible for you to arrive at this point without going to a period or periods that you've been on the grill and you've been cooked and we come to this spiritual maturity as you have come to and a lot of you here have come to that spiritual maturity of recognizing recognition of the importance of the moment of understanding that this is it and it's here and now and that has tremendous importance of recognizing that to even coming to that point of recognizing that it's in front of you right now and the gateway has opened up and not postponing it to another time is like this is it I need to jump through this right now you know right now not tomorrow not next week not next month right now and you have come to that yeah. and all of you that are here have come to that so and that's impossible to really uh, explain it to anybody who hasn't come to this level I mean you may be somebody may be here 30 years old somebody here may be 85 years old or whatever but you whether it was your past life lives prepared you to get to this point but you've been systematically being walked by the master to get to where you're at so your spiritual ears opened up your spiritual heart opened up your spiritual eyes opened up where the rest of the population may hear the same things I'm saying but they don't really hear it they may look at the same object but they don't see it they may be in contact with the same energy but the hearts not open to receive the message and that by itself getting to this point for all of you being together here and now and I see your dedication this is the eight day eight days in a row you have showed up and you're here that's to me shows the dedication and the maturity so now recognizing that is this is the time this is the opportunity to take advantage of it that now right now is where the gates to heaven have opened up and you have to act on it so congratulations I'm very happy you're with us my dear sister we're gonna have an incredible journey together and I am dedicated to do my best to give you my best yeah 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 beautiful 
So, speaking about who am I, who am I? Through the grace of my teacher, Papaji, I investigated and I realized that I'm not my name, I am not my last name, my family name, I'm not my nationality, I'm not the religion that was forced upon me, and I was, they were trying to brainwash me to buy into it. And as you go deeper, you start to, as you're investigating, you're honestly investigating and you're trying to really be candid in it, being really truthful with yourself and you're digging in, you're digging in and you start to see, okay, I can change my first name, I can change my last name, I can t take another nationality. I can dive into a different culture. I can change the religion. Even today, I can even change my body to another sex. The technology gives you that option to do it. And then you just start looking, am I really my thoughts? And if I'm my thoughts, why can I see them? How come I can see them from the outside? How come I can be aware of them? So even that is a doubt and you don't really take it seriously. Am I really my ever-changing emotions? If I'm really my emotions, then how come I can observe them that they come and go? If something comes and goes, how real is it? Am I my ever-changing body? This body that is constantly changing, transforming, or decaying. And upon closer investigation, you get closer to the truth of who you are. You begin to see. If you're really like focused, you're really dedicated, you really want the truth, and your desire is that, of course, the Grand, Her Majesty, the Supreme, you take one step and the Supreme takes 100 steps, 99 steps towards that direction because now you're starting to show interest and you're paying attention, your attention is coming. You're waking up from the sleep. You're starting to wake up to the truth of who you are. And you're going deeper, deeper, deeper. Your attention starts to shift inside in this inner journey. And in the beginning, it's a little bit difficult because the outside world, there's a lot of eye candies. So you, you know, all these things popping up. It's like driving on Sunset Boulevard in LA or Hollywood Boulevard and you see all these billboards. Try me, try me, eat me, eat me, drink me, drink me, buy me, buy me. There's a lot of entertainment outside. Or if you go to Las Vegas and you're driving on a strip or walking on a strip and there's all these entertainments wants to take you. But on this path, you're kind of ignoring, start to ignore these things and you're bringing your attention inwards. And as this shift is happening, it's difficult at times 
because everybody else is looking outside and you're starting to look inside and there's no entertainment yet into it. You're in this period that in between. It's like when you're going to grow your hair from short to long, you go through this weird period. It's not short, it's not long. So there's this weirdness happening. So the same thing on your spiritual path, you're shifting, you're not 100% recognizing the juice yet. So it's not like you're blasted by this bliss feeling and this calmness inside of being just drunk in divine love. You get bits of it, but you're not there yet. You're in the shift. You're disconnecting from the world that appears and disappears with all of its entertainments. Oh, come and love me and come and marry me and we have kids together or or let's have this house and let's go on this vacation. Da, 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 da. It's just very strong, you know, and it's very attractive. And all your life you've been looking in that direction. Now you are shifting and you're looking inwards. So once it's turning it's not that pretty it's not always fun there's a lot of doubts and in between spaces that you've been that you feel lost you can't go back to the world anymore because it's not working for you you can't fall asleep again because you're half awake but you're not completely awakened either. So you're in between place. And there are times that you're going to experience and you have experienced. I'm 100% sure of that because you wouldn't be here right now and you wouldn't be listening to me that you feel like you lost your way. That at one point you came to the world of the spirit and things were really going well and then you got deviated deviated and you went through like a few years that you lost and you feel like you lost it. And now you're finding it again because you because that was the period that these gates, these doors are turning and in, that's the weird part that the hair is short to the hair is long. You have to go through that trans transition period of the weirdness. But as the attention is turning inwards, then you're getting, start getting the juice because you feel the bliss, the love of being centered, being quiet and starting to recognize the nobody starting to recognize that you're really not anything. So you start to disidentify with things you thought you were and identify more with what you are. And in this what you are, you, you have the sense of I am but the more you dive into it, I am, but I am not anything. Yet, I am all of it. And that's a very critical part. That's the part that the teacher, the master, comes because this is the final place. It's very delicate. It needs to really be taken care of. It, because it's very easy. You've done a lot of work. You've come all the way to here. But everything could be lost. If it's not nurtured. If it's not taken care of. If it's not really paying attention to it. And being very diligent with it. It can all be spelled. 
So this other last stage that you're in, that's where you need to get selfish, literally be selfish, and really be dedicated, rejecting anything that's not supporting the path. And that's where your intuition comes and your true responsibility comes. That means your response, your main responsibility in this life, your number one priority, number one responsibility in this life, the one on the very top and everything else is below it, is not anything that people tell you. Oh, you have to be responsible to your children or your family or the country or your religion or your whatever. No. None of them is your main responsibility in this life. It's not correct. This is what they've told you. Your main and foremost and number one responsibility in this life and this path, especially in this stage that you are, is to be utterly, ruthlessly, 100% truthful to your calling and yourself. What is right for you? What is right? your calling, your responsibility is to be truthful to yourself. What 100% feels right, whatever that is, it feels really right for me to be in the nature and meditate. That's what my heart tells me. My heart tells me that I need to be with my children and take care of them then that's the right thing. My heart tells me to be with my older mother and be available for her rather than go travel around the world. Then that is my truth. Or my truth is to go to the ashram, be with my, t my teacher now. This is my calling more than anything else. Then that is your truth. Whatever your heart at this stage is really saying this, then you're responsible to follow that, to respond to that, whatever is your truth. You promise two of your girlfriends that you're going to go on a vacation with them, but now you're in this deep silent place, and it's like, you know what? I'm sorry, I know I promised you we're going to go to this resort for a week. We bought the tickets and everything, but I want to follow my truth. And my truth tells me to stay here. I want to stay here and go to this retreat with Zarathustra and my other brothers, sisters. This is my truth. Then in that moment, you do what your truth tells you. It's tuning into this everything starts to get tuned into the force is pulling you her majesty the love of god is bringing you in there but in the meantime you're also denying distractions that has kept you into a world of illusion for thousands of years and now you're in this final place you cannot afford not paying attention if you want to cross this river to fifth dimension if you want to come to this other dimension you cannot not pay attention and make that your focal point.
You've come a long way. It doesn't matter how long you've been in these teachings, with me or with anybody, or you're new to it. I just started doing this. Yeah, but you don't know all the years before that, all the stuff you've gone through that prepared you for this. Now you're here. You have to feel the urgency of the moment that this is my opportunity for this quantum leap into the fifth dimensional consciousness, which is a consciousness of oneness. But what is the consciousness of oneness? What is being one? Those of you who've been with me, you have heard me saying that at one point in your spiritual evolution, you have to go beyond what is good and what is bad. You have to elevate beyond what is good and what is bad. I know the spiritual warrior, the spiritual seeker, only wants the goodies. I only want to be in Christ consciousness and just feel the bliss and light and angels and everything. But that's also a hindrance. You don't realize that God is also dark. You think God is only light. And that's not true. God is also dark. That's why you have darkness in you. The final stages of self-realization in order to, to rise above all of it is the recognition of when you say, I am one, means you're also one with Adolf Hitler. Oneness means the goodies, all the light and all the dark. Oneness doesn't mean that it's only the angels and it's all lovey-dovey and peaches and cream. Oneness means the filth, the dark, the betray, the killing, the raping, the ugliness is also you. You are all of it, not just one part. If you want to be liberated and go the next level to freedom, you also have to recognize who you are. One of the most incredible spiritual books I would that was presented to me by my beloved best friend, Guru Master Ernest Middleton, this beautiful angel that came to my life in a very pivotal point that I was very depressed and ready to commit suicide. And he appears, this beautiful black man with dreadlocks that to this day is my best friend, my brother, and my teacher, even though he's not in, in this world anymore physically, presents me with this book. It was the first book I got from Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, Osho, the infamous guru. And it was like, I think the title was The Way, to the, the Way of the Heart or the journey of the heart. I don't quite remember the title. This is long time ago. And my brother Ernie had a way of presenting spiritual things to me. He would never push it. He would just leave the book, 
he just left the book in my apartment on my bed. So the book is sitting on a bed. He would never come and say, read this, or you should read this, or you should do that. He would just leave it there. He had his way. And I pick up the book. I open it. This is the ever first book I ever got from Osho. I open the book. I open the first page. And it says, I am all there is beautiful. I am all there is ugly. I am total. I read this sentence. And in that moment, the cosmic force punched me in my third eye. As if literally somebody landed a punch right here in my third eye. I read this. And I'm still a baby. This is the beginning of me waking up. This is a long time ago. And I poof, got punched in my third eye. And I literally, luckily I was standing right in front of my bed. And I fell on my bed. I fell down. I am all there is beautiful. I am all there is ugly. I am total. Years and years after waking up and slowly, slowly starting to realize my light and my darkness, realizing all of it is in me. And when I say I am one, means I'm also one with Donald Trump. I am one with Hitler. I am one with Saddam Hussein. I am one with Chinggis Khan. I am one with COVID-19. I am one with all of it. Oneness means everything is included. And we are in this very edge of self-realization that we need this push, this jump, this quantum leap into the fifth dimensional consciousness is to go beyond what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, into the next level. And those ideas and those visions are the very ones that doesn't allow us to go into the oneness and to recognize the presence, that the presence is in everything and everyone simultaneously here. And then your spiritual third eye, it opens up. Your heart opens up. Because you're no longer operating from good and bad. It's tremendous explosion will happen into entering into the cosmic consciousness of entering into this other level of seeing everything from above of the good, the bad, what's righteous, what's not, and rising above it and finally freeing yourself from all of that. And being all of it, yet not being any of it simultaneously, which human mind cannot understand that how you can be all of it and not be any of it. In one simple question, who am I? And in that, the dissolution of the person, the dissolution of Zarathustra, of this person, an individual entity separated from the source, this person that all of his life 
was in separation, the sense of separation, that sense begins to disappear. The body is still here, the mind is here, the emotions are still there. The person operates on its conditioning and its DNA makeup. The body doesn't get enlightened. The mind doesn't get enlightened. The emotions don't get enlightened. That sense of separation is no longer there. And in the absence of that sense, there is oneness, which you realize it's always been there. Nothing you gained. You just realized your true nature and you're free forever. And in that recognition, comes tremendous amount of power. It begins to channel this tremendous, beyond imagination, love, silence. It's beyond imagination because it's not personal. It doesn't belong to one person. It's the universe begins to operate through you and transmit this love, which is beyond anything we can imagine, anything worldly. All the worldly stuff are just indicating to that. It's just a little taste of it. It's like I have. You know, I'm just tasting a little bit of this water. It's not the whole thing. So all of a sudden, you're going to have the whole thing to you. Why settle for a little bit, a little, little taste of it, when you can have the whole thing? Why should I settle for a little bit of a worldly love which is conditional and it comes and goes when I can be this infinite love always? When I can eradicate a life of fear, worry and anxiety for a little material comfort for a very short period of time when I can just be free forever, whether I have that material comfort or not, I can be freed. Why should I settle for that? That's selling myself short. For what? Going back and being a beggar when I'm the king? No. No. I will sacrifice everything for awareness and never sacrifice or compromise awareness for anything. Regardless of the price that I have to pay. That is my responsibility in this life. And that is, should be the attitude of the one who wants to arrive and wants to merge in with divine consciousness. If that attitude is not there, then you're not worthy. You're not ready. So,
So, there are times that we also have to demonstrate our worthiness. It's not just one way, two ways. Am I worthy to receive your wisdom? Am I ready to receive your wisdom? Am I willing to die for you, for this cause, for this mission? Am I willing to die? What am I willing to give? A one time, I, when I was searching, I was poor, I didn't have money, I was a hippie traveler. I go to India, <clears throat> I want to stay in India for as long as I can to be at the feet of my master. And there was one moment with Master Punjaji that he just blasted me. It was like I wasn't one of the favorites. I was never one of the favorites of the Master. And I didn't understand it at that time because, you know, of course, jealousy comes and he's giving juice to other people and giving him love and attention. And I was not one of them. And one time in the morning, we used to go at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're in Lucknow, and normally I was there in the winter time, so it's cold. So you're all dressed up cold, you're standing in line waiting for the master to come at 8.30 in the morning, but you get there at 7 because you have to be there. So you get to get up at 5.30 in the morning, get ready, get yourself ready, eat something and go there and wait, and you're all waiting there. And finally the master comes and uh, the car comes and pulls over and he gets out of the vehicle. And he's just so sweet, namaste, but everybody. And I feel like he doesn't love me. And I'm in just in this moping, moping period. It's just very common, you know, in the relationship with your teacher. You know, you go through all these phases. And he's just namasteing everyone. And then he looks into, he's crossed the street on the other side. We're on this side. And he's namasteing, namasteing, very sweet. And he looks into my eyes very intensely. And I see these two laser beams blast at me. I went like, like this. I, I mean, honestly, as if somebody connected like 5,000 volts of electricity to my body and I'm just like going like this. Uh, and then, you know, he goes back and he's namasteing other people and I'm like literally shaking, like what the hell just happened? And then he's namasteing, namasteing, namasteing. He comes back again to me. Two laser who's blasting me again like this. And you're looking away. Da -da -da -da, it namastes everyone and he goes in. Nobody saw what happened. Nobody noticed it. So anyway, I go into the satsang house and I'm sitting there with the master. Da -da -da -da. The satsang happens. Normally there was like 150, 200 people. And most of the time I would sit in the back. Because I didn't think, you know, I was loved or... I didn't get any juice from him. He didn't pay any attention to me. But right after that time, I realized that, wait a minute. If he didn't want you to be here, and if he didn't love you, and if he wasn't grooming you for something in the future, you would have never got that blast of laser beams because it just awakened every cell in my body. I mean, I can't explain this. This is beyond, and I've really barely ever talked about it to anybody. I mean, I've had a lot of spiritual experiences happen to me, but they're private and they're meant to be for you only, not being shared in public. Or at the right moment, you share it and it comes out. But this was like beyond. I can't, I can't explain it. There's no explanation of what happened. But it awakened 
every cell in my body. And right at the point that I thought I wasn't being loved or I, the master doesn't want me to be, to be there and because he doesn't give me any attention or he doesn't talk to me or any of that, I get this gift. I get this love. I get this bliss because it literally transformed me, transformed everything in me. How did I get to say this? What was I saying before that? I forgot. Can somebody remind me what was I saying prior to that? Were you listening? I mean, what was I saying? How did I come to it? I forgot what I was trying to say. I think we, we all got lost. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, looking at the wall and yes, yes, correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad spiritual teacher. He forgot what he was talking about. <laughs> that has happened many times to me in my workshops. Hilda knows. Monica knows. I'm in the middle of something and then I have to ask I don't even know what I, why I'm talking about this. What was I talking about originally? You have to go beyond. Into the truth of who you are. Who are you? And you come into this place because the mind goes into silence and I am remains the I am but it's unidentified with anything and I am is not judging anything you rise above judgment you rise above the human that's why Frederick Nietzsche in Thus Spake Zarathustra is talking about that when Zarathustra comes from the mountains to the village, to the town, he says God is dead and it's the birth of Superman. It's super consciousness. It's entering into the cosmic consciousness beyond what is right and what is wrong into you climbing the pyramid, coming to the very top, beyond all of that. And then you begin to see all from that place. The third eye, the all-seeing eye is open. And then the universal love operates through you. So my brothers, sisters, I know you're sincere. I know that because I see it in your heart. I see the love you have and you want to help humanity. You want to help this planet to raise its vibrations. But you have to be awakened. So you're clear. Not from this place. You have to awaken first, and for that, you got to be focused on yourself only. That has to be your priority. Then you're of value to the planet. Can you imagine that 40, 50 awakened beings fully realize what kind of generator will create what kind of power of love is going to be radiating constantly from your presence without even doing anything? You're just walking around, living your life, and you're blasting this planet with this love? So if you want to do that, you're first you have to discard 
the world and go in. Because the world is those eye candies. You're involved with the politics, with this, with environment, da, 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 da. They're your distractions. They're holding you in the maya. You have to go beyond the maya into the fifth dimensional consciousness. Means the consciousness of oneness. Means the recognition that all of it is yourself. Then the power will come. The love will come and uses you to transform. And this is the time right now. So let's go. Do it. Join me. I'm here. I'm committed to you. Get committed to you too. You get committed to you. I'm committed to you. You don't get committed to me. You get committed to yourself. Do that. Come and join me in this love. Drink from this love with me. It's plenty for all of us. I want to share this with you. Come. This is different than worldly stuff. Worldly stuff, you don't want to give it away. Because if you give it away, then you don't have. But this one is infinite. There's no end to it. <laughs> All right, so we have some questions here, Iman. Every time I ask a meditation, who am I? Iman, do you feel like uh, speaking to us and and uh, rather than me reading your comment if you want to share you feel hey, like it yes yeah sure, no problem. hi Iman hi everybody. hi, hi. hi. <laughs> um, okay so my question was and this happened several times uh, pre-question uh, you need to know since 2017 I don't watch TV I don't listen to the news. I uh, detached from what you call a matrix. So it's been three years now. So my question is, um, since uh, getting in touch with you, uh, Zarathustra, uh, you said to ask the question, who am I? So for the past three months, every time in deep meditation, I try to ask the question, who am I? The answer always comes back is, what does it matter? What does it matter? Mm -hmm. So now you mentioned it again, and I said, okay, let me ask. Uh, somehow, I don't know, my analogy is, it always comes back with, what does it matter? So do I get turned off by the question of, who am I? Or is there no I? Or... What does it really matter? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> the questioning of who am I is another way. It's another tool to bring your attention to the seer, to the watcher. The witness. The witness. That which is always here so who am I is an incredible question because it turns your attention inwards because upon investigation of who am I, you realize, okay, I'm not my name. I'm not my family name. I am not my nationality because these are all changeable and they can come and go. Yes, I understand. Is there a different way? I guess what I'm trying to ask is to, to try and search for the witness or try to connect with the witness. 
um, is there a different way from that question? Because it, I guess what I'm saying is that question's not working for me, it seems. Well, you don't ask that question 20 times a day. You ask it once or twice or three times, three times, and you just look. Close your eyes and you look. And if you're lucky, there is no answer. It's silence. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. I'm constantly in silence. It's mm -hmm. it's when I when I when I come to when I break the silence and try when I remember you and I try to ask that question, it comes back to saying what does it matter? Yeah, to whom does it matter? That's beautiful answer. It's perfect. Because nothingness when you come to the truth of who you are, silence, there's nothing to say. There's, but does it matter? To whom does it matter? If you're nothing and you're no one, then what difference does it make? You're at the right place. You're getting the right answer, my sister. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, that's absolutely the answer. It's the pointer to that which is not explainable. Let me explain another part of it. So, sometimes, I mean, of course, I've realized in all these years that I have to use different examples. And, and sometimes saying something in a certain way, it doesn't click. So you have to just kind of create different examples, different ways of saying it. Maybe another way clicks. So imagine that 12 people standing in a circle and focused in the middle. To the middle but in the middle of circle these 12 people standing there and there's nothing in the middle and that nothing is the one that is projecting these people so these 12 people standing there actually are projection of the nothingness can you make that imagination right now can you bring that picture that you are standing in a circle and the nothing, the force, I am, is projecting itself from unmanifest to manifest. And that's what, when realization comes, you come to. Because you start to realize that from nothingness comes everything and all of it goes back to nothingness it's a constant constantly it manifests itself in the world of duality to look at itself but in the middle there's nothing all these 12 people looking in the middle, they don't see anything there. But it's that they don't see empty space has created them. So they are and they are not. I know I'm going to channel 2 or channel 3. But that which you're looking for, it's neither this nor that. It's that which you're looking for. It's in between the lines. It's not this line or that line. It's in between the lines. It's the empty space in between the two lines. And that's what you're looking for. And that's what you find when you look inside. And you come, your mind goes into silence. 
there is still the being, but it's not really anything, yet it's everything. And I can't explain it to you. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Until you come to that point, I can just sit down here and talk about it a million times until you touch it and see it for yourself. It's un it's incredible because we want to get it with our intellect and it's impossible to get it because it's either white or black. It's either you are or you're not, but it's neither this or neither that. People come and ask me about karma. Yes, there is karma and there is not. People ask me about free will. Yes, you have free will till you realize you don't have it. And it's like, what? Yes, you have it till you realize you don't have it. You never had it, then it's never been there. But prior to that, it's been there. What? What? Excuse me? your head starts going like this but that's what it is it's not this line you know you open a book and look at it's not the lines it's in between the lines what you're looking for is there not this line or that line those lines they're referring to that which is not explainable that which you cannot write and it's there and that's where the beauty of the teaching of the master, of the guru, of the messenger comes. Because that part, we somebody who's already gone there is going to have to tell you, look over there. Because otherwise, there's, it's literally impossible. It only happened to maybe a few people in the entire history of mankind. Trillions of trillions of trillion people came and left. Maybe a few of them discovered it on their own. The rest, we need someone to point it out to us because that's where it is. And that's what happened for me. Papaji had to point it out to me. That what does it mean that I'm nothing, yet I'm everything. And that's the truth of who you are. Hi, Jesse, you have another question? Or this is, yeah, hi. hi. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. So when I ask the question, who am I? The deeper answer that comes to me, I guess, in other times is infinite possibilities, which is an exciting thought. It's just kind of anything that I can think of, I can have or become. Um, I've started working a lot with energy. I went to Landmark like six years ago. Are you familiar with Landmark? To a certain point, yes. So it, it does a, a good job of, uh, I guess, getting rid of the ego. So I felt that bliss, um, and it lasted for a long time, several months, and a whole lot of silence inside, um, a whole lot of uh, no thoughts going on. It was mm -hmm. just blank. I did find it to be a little bit boring at the time. I wasn't spiritual at all mm -hmm. at six years ago. I found it to be kind of boring. Um, what kind of boring? Was, what kind of boring? Um, I wasn't entertained the way I, I was used to being entertained. Everything that was going on in normal life with family members or friends, with their, everything they talked about was boring. I had no interest in... Okay, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Let me see if I understand. You're, are you... Ref not silence or the bliss was boring the family entertainment yeah. or conversations yes, all of it my life felt boring right yes that's very natural and so then i'm i'm kind of the question i've been asking for the last 6 years is what am i supposed to do with my life i can i can go back to that place if i can find it again i don't have the same peace i had then but but then what am i supposed to do that's the question. Mm -hmm. just driving right. Me. right, right, right. This is great. It's a wonderful place to be.
Congratulations. You're, you're at almost in graduation point to go to the next level if you're asking that question. All of us are either going through it or have gone through it. That's one of the steps of the path on this, on this journey. What am I going to do? What is my mission? And if that comes up for you, know that you're exactly at the right place. As confusing as it seems to be, that is one of the steps in the ladder to a higher consciousness of being bewildered into this place that what is my mission? It may even take 10 years, 15 years, or it may take a year or six months. But know that this is one of the steps. So you're in the right place. I don't know how much <laughs> of comforting that answer is to you. But your heart is pure and you have a deep love of spirit. God realization. So that which has brought you to this point is responsible for taking you further. So don't beat yourself up if you're not finding out the answer. It's certain, I guarantee you, Normally, a lot of times I don't give any guarantees, but it will reveal itself to you. Just stay on the course and keep doing what you're doing. Means mainly be quiet. Practice being quiet. And it will reveal itself to you. You're on the right path. Second. Okay. Yes, could I ask one more question? Oh. Yes. Depends how long is the answer, but go, go ahead and ask it, and we'll see if we have time. Okay. Uh, my other question is, I deal, I'm working a lot since becoming spiritual with energy work, um, within myself, learning how to, I get, I don't, um, recently, I think I activated, or I did activate the Kundalini energy. Mm -hmm. um, so, since starting working with you, I've been experiencing a lot more energy while mm -hmm. I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's ascension symptoms or something. Right. I wondered if you, and if you understand that. How, lo how long has it been that we've been together? Five or six, seven days. Okay, so, so in past seven days that you've joined in, you're feeling tremendous amount of energy, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what? And so, what was the last part of your question? Um, it's 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 causing me to think a lot about it. So we're, you're talking about silence and being still, and and I'm wondering if it's the same thing to be silence because I'm just observing all this going on in my body, and it feels like silence, even though it's. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of entertainment, and yet there's not really a, a thought. And I'm, I'm just being entertained at what's happening in the body. Yeah. The mind... I don't know if you remember, I've said it a few times, or anybody remembers. I said, the more you're silent, the more you're quiet, the more you dive, your attention goes to the witness, and the mind becomes quiet. The, you're activating the grid or the grid is getting activated the more energy appears it starts to show because what happens is the person that things is doing things is getting out of the way it's getting illuminated it's in the dissolution of who you think you are it's in the disappearance of the idea of yourself as a separate entity, as someone separated 
when you're becoming quiet, the idea of someone separated and is in charge begins to disappear. So it's getting out of the way and the energy starts, the presence begins to reveal itself. So you're becoming more of a pure conduit through not thinking, not having an idea, it's just simply being and then God starts to reveal itself. The presence begin to reveal itself. Tremendous amount of energy starts to come. So all kinds of things can happen after that. Does it make any sense? Yes, I don't know what happens after that. Still. Well, neither do I. I have no idea what's... <laughs> Who cares? It, whatever happens is in very good hands. That which has created the creator of the creation is responsible for that. It's not my responsibility or yours. We're merely tools. Tools. I'm just a pen. The master is is writing. The pen is not writing on its own. It's the master who's writing. The writer writes. This guy here is just a pen. Now, the one who's holding it can write beautiful things or ugly things. I'm just a pen. That's all I am. Only the pen. And the same thing, you're disappearing and that who created, that the creator of the creation is entering in and using you. So we'll see what kind of plans there is for you, but whatever it is, it is going to be holy and is going to be representing the truth. Great. <laughs> We're coming to the end of our eight day um, retreat. Tomorrow is our last and final day. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Um, Get some rest. My suggestion is to be quiet. If you can, don't get engaged with the world. Just sink in with this beautiful being, this presence, this energy. Just sit in it. Just drink it. Just be in it. Like, allow things to just sink in and marinate. without you before you get engaged with the world before you go and turn on the news about the election or this or that and you drag yourself back into the world of thoughts and maya just stay in your center protect your consciousness by staying centered imagine that you are when you're planting a seed and you're putting, and it becomes a little tree. You planted the seed, it's becoming, it's germinating, it becomes a little plant. It can be a big orange tree, you know, and giving like hundreds of producing oranges. But in the beginning, it's a baby. So what you need to do is you need to put a little fence around this plant so Dogs, cats, deers, animals don't come and walk on it and break it. So you need to protect it. Then you also put some ropes or threads or something to tie it up, making sure the wind is not going to break it. So you need to protect it. So eventually this plant grows and gets stronger. It gets to a point that it's strong and it's rooted 
and the wind is not going to break it and the animals cannot break it. So then you don't need the fence and you don't need the rope. And then it keeps growing, growing, and it becomes a huge tree with lots of oranges and a lot of leaves and branches. And hundreds of people can come and sit under this orange tree and enjoy the shade in a hot summer day and relax under the shade of this beautiful majestic tree. So right now, you protect your consciousness by not getting engaged with discussions, news, energies that they're not in your same frequency as you are and they can drag you out. Just take time. Just sit with yourself. Be in silence, go to the nature, just spend some time by yourself and just kind of let this integrate and this vibration, this beautiful vibration to gradually raises your frequency. So protect yourself, protect your consciousness and the work you've done. I'm here for you. We meet tomorrow. We have Wednesday Academy. So we keep doing the work. We keep doing the work. And as we're doing the work, we see that as we're, my inner world changes. As I'm raising my vibrations to a higher frequency, what happens is the utter world, the world outside of me, will fix itself to where I am. Because it has to. See, this is the difference. These other courses or teachings is to teach you how to positive think positive visualization to manipulate the world outside you so you can get what you want. This is, is through your mind being silent, you change your vibrations and you go to a higher frequency. It means you changing the TV channel, old days, you know, remember you had to turn the knob? So you're going from a horror movie you're changing the channel and you're going to a comedy. So you're changing the channel within yourself. And as your, your vibration changes and you go to this other consciousness, this other level, then the world which is being presented to you not the world that is being presented to everybody, the one that is being presented to you, because that's all it is, is changes according to your consciousness. Because that world is a projection of your mind. The one that you're interacting with is a projection of your mind. So when your mind goes into silence, you're becoming quiet, naturally, what is coming back to you will be harmonized to where you're at. So you enter into harmony within yourself, but then you're going to find the utter world is starts to serve you. Things falling into pieces. All of a sudden you're meeting conscious people. They're kind to you. They're nice to you or they're in your level that's different than wanting the entire planet to be what you want it to be in your image no the entire planet it does its own thing don't worry about it don't worry about what the planet does it's not important what is important is where you're at don't get distracted 
okay? Don't get distracted with what go what's going on there. I know some of it sounds very righteous and it's very important and you have to make a change. That's not how you make the change. You change yourself first. We need you to come to the Buddha that you are. Then you're going to have a much bigger impact. Then it's a universal impact, not just a personal impact. That's too little. Don't settle for that. Go for the big prize, not the little stuff. Don't pick up crumbs. Go for the real deal. Go for the union with God. Why union with man? Man is temporarily. Man comes and goes. Man betrays you. It's God that is always here. Go for that love. That's beyond anything else. Then you will have the man. So many will come and go in your life. Because you found the real one, everybody wants a part of you. Otherwise, you're running after this person, that person, this thing, this, that thing, and it always turns to be sour at the end of the day. Because that's not where it is. Go for the real thing. Okay? Amir is signaling me. <laughs> I'm glad Amir is here because otherwise I get lost and I start talking and maybe I'm going to talk for another hour and I forget about that our retreat is a two hour uh, time retreat. I forget that some of you live in another continent and you may be tired. It's late at your home. So anyway, I'm just going to go through my, bear with me to go through my routine announcements. Some of you have been very kind and very loving and been donating and I'm very grateful. We're very, very, very grateful to your kindness, all of us in this venture, because you're allowing us to continue coming up with quality videos, podcasts, images, pictures, messages, everything. So we're able to do that. So thank you. Uh, if you feel like making a donation, we're very appreciative of it. Uh, coming in three weeks, I have a sh shamanic healing circle event it's a two-hour event and followed by self-awakening mastery workshop which is basically designed and focused on helping you having the tools to how quiet your mind going beyond your mind and quickly raising your vibrations to a higher frequency and having the know-how to go beyond your thoughts, emotions, and your body to free yourself of the three elements. So this is what this workshop is going to be about. So if you have a desire to be a part of it, go ahead and join us and sign up through our website. If you have any questions, you're welcome to write to me. Uh, info at zarathustra.tv and my website is zarathustra.tv as well as if you have any comments uh, you want to share thank you for your lovely messages by the way you've been sending us uh, it's very heartwarming and I do appreciate it uh, in addition to that uh, Leslie and I we talked about it earlier you heard it in, in our uh, uh, meeting today is that there's a private training program. It's a one-on-one -on -one training program that I have created. And I don't know how long I'm able to offer it, but for now it is available. And if you can dedicate yourself and commit to it and you have 
you can't get over the hump, then I design a tailor-made program for you and I help you with that and I'll walk you through every step uh, with homeworks, exercises, teachings, tools and techniques. So feel free to contact me and I'll make a consultation appointment with you and we talk about it and I'll explain everything to you and I hear from you that what is it you want to accomplish. Did I say everything I needed to say, Amir? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So my boss here tells me that <laughs> I was a good boy and I said everything I needed to say. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow is our last final day, day nine. And um, I hope to see all of you again. Sending you my love, light, namaste, wherever you are in the world. I'm very happy that we're able to connect with each other. And also all of my pages, the address to my podcast, the YouTube, and uh, Twitter and Facebook account is Zaratustra 5D. And go ahead and subscribe on your, our YouTube channel. We are going to be putting a lot of videos out. Uh, so we're working on that. Much love and light to you. Namaste.